بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد البشير النذير والسراج المنير وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إخوتي وأخواتي أبنائي وبناتي أنا سعيد جد سعيد بأن ألقى هذا الجمع الغفير من إخواني المسلمين في هذه البلاد All praise and thanks is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our master, our creator, our sustainer. We praise him, the praise and the thanks and the gratitude that he deserves. And we send peace and blessings on our final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and my sisters, my children, my daughters, I would like to show and express to you my happiness and my joy and my pleasure being here with you. أنا أريد أن أتكلم في خلال هذه الدقائق المعدودات عن مقومات الأسرة السعيدة. I would like to speak, inshallah, in these few moments about some of the key ingredients to make and establish a happy family. وهذه النقاط قد سجلتها من أجل ألا استطرد في الكلام وهي إثنة عشرة نقطة. And this has been recorded previously in a series of 12 episodes where I spoke in details about this topic. ثم سلم على أهله قال الشيطان لإخوانه لا مبيت اليوم هاهنا فإذا جلس على طعامه فقال بسم الله قال الشيطان لإخوانه ولا عشاء اليوم هاهنا أما إذا دخل بيته فلم يذكر اسم الله وجلس على عشائه فلم يذكر اسم الله قال الشيطان لإخوانه أدركنا المبيت والعشاء one of the first key important ingredients to make a successful and a happy family is frequent remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if someone enters his house, as mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he enters the house and he starts with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, Bismillah. And then he sends salam upon the family and the members of the household. In that case, the shaitan would not stay in this house. Similarly, if someone was to eat and he starts with Bismillah. Using these words of remembrance inside the house, the shaitan himself, he will say that there is no dinner for us tonight. And similarly as well, if the person does not say these words of remembrance, then he leaves space and a home for shaitan to stay with him in that house. Uh, من مقومات الأسرة السعيدة الإكثار من الدعاء ونجد في القرآن الكريم كثيرا من هذه الأدعية كقول الله عز وجل ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما كقول زكريا عليه السلام رب هب لي من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء وكذلك الدعاء الذي علمنا إياه ربنا جل جلاله رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين The second important key ingredient to make a successful family and household is frequent and lots of dua making lots of dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, similarly, we know in the verses of the Qur'an that the verse or the dua to make, O oh Allah, grant us from our children and from our wives what is pleasing to our eyes and what is the coolness to our eyes and make us for the muttaqin, make us for those who are pious leaders. And similarly, Z Zakaria salam, made a similar dua that, O oh Allah, grant for my offspring uh, a offspring that is pure and an offspring that is good. 
and many verses in the Quran that talk about making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this dua is a key ingredient to making the house blessed and a successful family, inshaAllah. والأبناء ولذلك الأبناء أيضا يدعون للآباء فيقول الواحد رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا والنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام قال ثلاثة لا ترد دعوتهم الصائم حتى يفطر والمسافر حتى يرجع ودعوة الوالد لولده and also this dua is not exclusive just to the parents. It's both the children and the parents. Children making dua for their parents, and similarly the parents making dua for their children. This is mentioned even in a hadith where the Prophet وسلم, he said that three types of people, their prayers or their duas are never rejected. The first is a person who is fasting. While he's fasting, this person's dua is answered. Similarly, a traveler, while he is traveling, his dua is not rejected. And lastly, the dua of a parent to his son or the dua of the child to his parent. Uh, ما يوقد في بيوت أزواجه نار ما لهم من طعام إلا الأسودان النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام في حجراته التي كان يسكن فيها يقول الحسن البصري رحمه الله كنت أدخلها وأنا غلام فتي فكنت إذا رفعت يدي نلت سقفها وإذا مددت رجلي نلت جدارها ولو اتكأت عليها لسقطت كانت حياة بسيطة ما فيها تكلف ما فيها كثرة مال ولا كثرة أثاث لكنها كانت حياة سعيدة هنية. Another important point and a key ingredient to a successful family is being grateful and being content, uh, being pleased and uh, showing gratitude to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala even if the wealth or uh, the whatever is inside the house is not a lot. So being grateful is a key ingredient. The Prophet وسلم, in his house, months will pass and days and nights will pass and there isn't anything in the house except dates and water. Yet he was content, yet he was pleased and happy and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Hassan al-Basri, one of the, the Imams at the time of the Salaf, he also mentions and describes the life that they used to live, how small their houses were. That even if they were to stretch their legs out, their legs and their feet will touch the walls because the four walls were very small and tight. This is a simple life that they led, yet their houses were blessed, yet they were grateful, they were content, and they were happy as well. <laughs> وفي بعضها أولما بسويق وتمر والسويق هو عصير الشعير والسيدة عائشة رضي الله عنها تحكي زواج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بها أمها دعت بماء فمسحت به وجهها وجه عائشة ثم أسلمتها إلى نسوة من الأنصار فخضبناها قالت فدخل علينا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ضحى ثم دعا بقدح من لبن فشرب منه ثم أعطاه لي فاستحييت فقال النسوة خذي من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قالت فشربت ثم دفعه إلى أولئك النسوة من الأنصار فقلنا لا نشتهيه فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام لا تجمعنا جوعا وكذبا also similarly with the, with the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu this humble lifestyle, this simple lifestyle, this easy lifestyle was uh, existing with even the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu and this is how he taught his wives that on occasions that they will have simple food, the water of wheat or soup and, and water and dates, food that is very uh, simple and very uh, humble. This is the life that they, they led. And the woman of Al-Ansar who was living in Medina they were, you can say, 
um, more wealthy than the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu or the women of Mecca. So at times they would feel shy not to eat from these simple types of food, but the Prophet Sallallahu regardless would uh, tell them to eat from it and also that the food uh, that they ate from would be blessed uh, after the Prophet Sallallahu offered it to them. النقطة الرابعة تذكر الحسنات في حال حصول الخلاف بين الزوج والزوجة بين الوالد والولد لابد أن نتذك أن يتذكر بعضنا حسنات بعض قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يفرك أي لا يكره مؤمن مؤمنة إن كره منها خلقا رضي منها آخر جاء رجل من الصحابة من أجل أن يشكو زوجته لعمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه فلما طرق على عمر الباب سمع زوجة عمر تصيح عليه وترفع صوتها فالرجل استحيا ورجع فخرج خلفه عمر قال له لما جئت ولما رجعت قال له يا أمير المؤمنين جئت أشكو زوجتي فسمعت زوجتك ترفع صوتها عليك فقال عمر رضي الله عنه إنما أصبر عليها لأنها تطبخ طعامي وتغسل ثيابي وترعى عيالي. Thirdly, an important point is to see the good in your spouse and to see the virtues and the good points and to remember them and to always remember the good between the husband and the wife or the parent and the son and the child. Uh, rather than always remembering the bad or the disagreements or the negatives, remember the good that is between you. Uh, once someone went to the leader of the Muslims, Umar ibn al-Khattab, and he went to complain to him about his wife. So while he was knocking, he heard the wife of Umar raise her voice at Umar. And he was surprised because this is Umar. And he felt shy that as soon as he heard her raise her voice, he went and he left and he was too shy to speak to Umar. So Umar came out and he said, why did you knock and why did you leave? He said, I came to you because I wanted to complain my wife. She raised her voice at me. But then I heard your wife raise her voice at you, so I left. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, I have to be patient with her because she cleans my clothes. She uh, feeds me and she cooks for me and she looks after me. She also looks after my children and educates them, so I have to be patient with her. So similarly, we should always remember the good in, our, in the husband and the wife or the parent and the children. وكذلك الزوجة إذا رأت من زوجها ما يسوءها فإنها تتذكر أنه يصلي الخمس ويصوم الشهر ولا يشرب الخمر ولا يأتي المحرمات وليست ألفاظه بالألفاظ الفاحشة القبيحة فهذه كلها حسنات في مقابل تلك السيئات تحصل بها الموازنة وتطيب بها الحياة. Similarly, the, the wife as well, uh, it would be good, it's good if she also remembers the good in her husband as well. So for example, if she sees something that she dislikes in her husband, and just to mention the hadith that was mentioned earlier as well, that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, do not hate your wives, do not dislike your wives. If you see a shortcoming in something, if you dislike one thing about your wife, then remember all of the good in your wife. So in this situation here as well, the wife, perhaps she doesn't like something in her husband. Perhaps he said something or, or there's something that she doesn't like. She, sh she should also remember that this is her husband. He prays five times a day. He doesn't drink khamir. He doesn't drink alcohol. Um, he fasts. There's good in him as well. And remembering all the good virtues in him, so that would, inshallah, outweigh and balance out the shortcomings and the mistakes that are in him. النقطة الخامسة التفاؤل كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يحب الفأل الحسن أبدا ما يتشاءم مهما كانت الظروف قاسية مهما كانت الأحوال سيئة يتفاؤل لما قتل جعفر ابن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه في مؤتة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام جاء يعزي زوجته أسماء بنت عميس التي ذكرها الدكتور سعيد في كلمته السابقة أسماء بنت عميس زوجة جعفر ابن أبي طالب فجاءت بأولادها عبد الله بن جعفر ومحمد بن جعفر 
وجعلت تظهر الحزن للرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم تشكو إليه الفقر فقال لها عليه الصلاة والسلام الفقر تخافين عليهم وأنا وليهم في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم 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 مرحم جعفرا واخلفه في أهله وبارك لعبد الله في صفقة يمينه ثم دعا بالحلاق فحلق لهم رؤوسهم. Another important ingredient and an important point is being very positive, being being very optimistic. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was an optimistic person and a positive person. Uh, once the, the wife, when Ja'far radiallahu an, uh, Ibn Abi Talib, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he passed away in a battle. He was martyred in a battle. The wife, he went to see the wife and the children of Ja'far to give condolences to the family of Ja'far. And the wife of Ja'far went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa showing her sadness and despair and crying and complaining about their situation and their affairs. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave her some words that were optimistic and encouraging, and he brought the children of uh, Ja'far, Abdullah, and Muhammad, uh, the children of Ja'far, and made dua for them. And, and, made, and made dua for Ja'far that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on him. And also, then he shaved off the hair of the two children and gave good words and good du'as and good positive uh, messages to the children and the family of Ja'far. Wa Asma' radiyallahu anha lamma nqadat iddatuha min Ja'far tazawwajaha Abu Bakr al-Siddiq thumma lamma mata Abu Bakr al-Siddiq wa inqadat iddatuha tazawwajaha Ali ibn Abi Talib wa kan indaha waladan Muhammad ibn Ja'far ومحمد ابن أبي بكر الصديق وقد تنازع الولدان يوما كل واحد منهما يقول أبي خير من أبيك محمد ابن جعفر يقول أبي خير من أبيك ومحمد ابن أبي بكر يقول أبي خير من أبيك فقال لها علي أحكمي بينهما فقالت لمحمد ابن أبي بكر كان أبوك خير الشيوخ وقالت لمحمد ابن جعفر كان أبوك خير الشباب قال لها علي فأين أنا So what happened to Asma? Asma is the wife of Ja'far. And uh, Sheikh Sa'id al-Qadi spoke about Asma, the, uh, the, the wife of Ja'far, may Allah be pleased with her, previously. After her idda was finished, she married Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And after she married, Abu, she married Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and she had a child from Abu Bakr. And then after Abu Bakr passed away, after the idda finished for her again, she then married Ali radiallahu an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her with these uh, great uh, companions. Then they had two children. One was from Ja'far, his name was Muhammad ibn Ja'far. And one was from Abu Bakr, Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr. And they had a dispute and a disagreement and an argument. Each one would say, my dad is better than yours. My father is better than yours. So Ali said to Asma to reconcile and judge between them. So Asma said, your father, to Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr, was the best person from the old generation. And your father, i.e. Muhammad ibn Ali, your father was the best from the youth, from the shabab. هذه المرأة تزوجها ثلاثة جعفر ابن أبي طالب أبو بكر الصديق علي ابن أبي طالب والثلاثة في الجنة وأنا أريد أن أسألكم يوم القيامة ستكون لمن من هؤلاء الثلاثة وكلهم في الجنة هذا سؤال يطرح عليهم ممكن ترتب عليه جائزة إن شاء الله السؤال بأن هذه المرأة تزوجها ثلاثة والثلاثة من أهل الجنة طيب إذا دخلت الجنة تكون لمن من الثلاثة This woman she married three of the great companions Ja'far, Abu Bakr and Ali May Allah be pleased with them all all three of them have been given glad tidings that they will be in Jannah, in paradise. The question to you, and there's a prize. When Asma goes to Jannah, inshallah, which husband would she pick? This is a question, inshallah. Saeed, Mopi. No. Al-awwal? Al-akhir. Li Ali. Li 
Ali. The first, Jafar. You're saying Jafar. Any other answers? Yes. Yes, go on. Yep. All of them. All of them. Allah. لا هو الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم حكم بأن المرأة إذا تزوجها أكثر من واحد في الدنيا وكلهم دخلوا الجنة تكون لأحسنهم خلقا. سبحان الله. نعم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that if a woman marries more than one man in different times and they all enter Jannah, she enters Jannah, then she gets the best one out of them in terms of character and religion. طيب العنصر السادس في مقومات الأسرة السعيدة التغافل التغافل كما قال بعض علمائنا تسعة أعشار حسن الخلق في التغافل بمعنى أنه ليس بالضرورة أن أحاسب المرأة على كل كلمة وكل تصرف فليس بالضرورة أن تحاسبني على كل كلمة وكل تصرف كذلك في علاقتي مع الأولاد لا بد أن يتغافل الإنسان عن بعض الأخطاء وهذا تجدونه كثيرا في سيرة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. The sixth uh, key ingredient is a very important one for a successful family is تغافل. تغافل meaning to keep a blind eye at times over some of the shortcomings, over some of the mistakes. That uh, if there is many virtues and one vice that a person he overlooks it. And he keeps a blind eye in time. This is very good between the husband and the wife. And this, is, this has been mentioned by some of the scholars of the past that this is from the best characteristics. This is one of the best types of characteristics to keep a blind eye in matters that might make a big deal if you, if you make it a big deal or if you notify it. Um, similarly, you will find in the life of the Prophet Wasallam. There's full of occasions where he practiced this characteristic, where he kept a blind eye in matters that are not worth making a big deal out of. العنصر السابع من مقومات الحياة الزوجية أو الحياة الأسرية السعيدة الشورة تشاور لابد أن يكون هناك بين الزوجين بين الأب والأولاد بين الأم والأولاد تشاور وهذا المعنى أشار إليه ربنا سبحانه وحين قال. فإن أراد في صالا عن تراض منهما وتشاور فلا جناح عليهما وكذلك نجد بأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في بيته كان يستشير أزواجه في بعض الأحيان كما في قصة الحديبية مع أم سلمة رضي الله عنها. نعم. طيب. An important successful ingredient in a successful family inshallah is to consult each other to seek counseling and consult each other this is very important that you take the opinion of your wife the wife takes the opinion of the husband and to discuss together and agree on important matters uh, this is what the prophet sallallahu himself he did in the famous uh, treaty the, when he went to mecca and he came back from Mecca to Medina. He was not able to perform Umrah with the companions. He went to consult his wife, Um Salama. And Um Salama gave him a beautiful suggestion that the Prophet ﷺ, he took and he followed the advice and the opinion of Um Salama. And there was lots of uh, success and, and greatness from the decision that he took from Um Salama. <laughs> تذكر الآخرة دائما يعني الإنسان ما يعتقد أن هذه الحياة ستطول لا دائما أتذكر أنني سأفارق هذه الزوجة عما قريب أو هي ستفارقني فربنا جل جلاله قال وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور فالإنسان ما يستمسك بالأمور ويتشدد فيها فإن الحياة سريع زوالها Another important point is to remember frequently the hereafter to remember that we would not stay here forever. This is important between the family, to know that this world is temporary and we won't live here forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this world is nothing but a temporary joy and a deception. So this is important that we will remember that my wife will lead me one day to the hereafter. I would leave my wife, my children will leave. We will all leave this world. والعنصر التاسع الصبر بمعنى أن يصبر كل منا على بقية أفراد الأسرة والله جل جلاله قال 
إنما يوفى الصابرون أجرهم بغير حساب وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وما أعطي أحد عطاء خيرا ولا أوسع من الصبر Another important ingredient is patience and sabr having patience between yourselves uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he would reward those who are patient with the reward without account and that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is nothing better to be granted and given than patience and this is the best and it is difficult to practice wa al anasir al thalatha al akhira tartib al awlawiyat wa ma'rifat al huquq thumma bina hadhihi al usra ala iman billah jalla jalalu af man assasa bunyanahu ala taqwa min Allah wa ridwan khayrun am man assasa bunyanahu the last three points, number one, is having good priority in your life and knowing each other's rights and giving each other their rights and also building the Iman. This is the best and the greatest foundation for a successful family that to build it upon Iman, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, that whoever founds his or establishes his foundation upon Iman and the great virtue in that, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> I was granted uh, 25 minutes and I had to share that between myself and, and the translator. But next time I will come, inshallah, and I will speak to you in, in English, inshallah. And I will lose my job. <laughs>